Welcome back, everybody. It is time for some more Mass Effect. And we, last week, uh, we did Novaria. Venezia is now dead. And so this week, we're going to take our time to go talk to everybody on the ship. And, of course, follow up with Liara at the very end. Because saving the blueberry for last is always saving the best for last. And naturally, you know, her mom just died. So we should probably take our time to, you know, really... Uh, talk that over with her and make sure she's okay. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm Angel. This is Gaming with Angels. Thank you for joining us, and I'll see you on the other side of the intro. That is your chance to be rude. Hey, kid. Don't ever let them get inside your head. They'll tell you what to do in life instead of everything you know that you can get. Let them guide your life towards regret I'll fight for what I love with every breath My past is filled with things I won't forget I use them all to push me to my best So treat the worst of times just like a test If only I could go back in time I'd tell myself that everything will end up alright Just push yourself, test yourself, figure out what you like And find your limits, don't be rigid, always work towards a prime Surround yourself with open minds, people can change your life A few friends with intent can help you feel alive Find a passion, take some action, and with a little time Just be patient, make a statement, try to enjoy your life They'll try to kick you while you're down they wanna rise up while you drown They wanna fill your head with doubt They're silently scared that you'll figure it out I'll make it look like I'm losing Won't bother hiding my bruises And when they finally think you're wounded Then it's your chance to be ruthless I can see that they compare I think everyone's against me Maybe something in the air Am I paranoid? I swear a void is forming And they're scared I walk a straight path Not many can say that I like to play fast Cross me and there's payback You better pray that I don't see your face at Any place that I go I know you hate that I've been doing fine I'm not wasting any more time I live for the fight and the climb I think that the pain that's deep inside Is what defines So I won't give up, I'm gonna make it to the top I don't care what's in my way, I swear I'm never gonna stop I could fall flat on my face and I swear I won't get back up Cause I don't deserve a thing and the road ahead is tough They'll try to kick you while you're down They wanna rise up while you drown they wanna fill your head with doubt They're silently scared that you'll figure it out Alright folks, so last week, uh... Well, we managed to get the Arachni on our side and kill Benezia in the process. So what does that mean? Well, that means that Blueberry is probably really upset. Maybe not so much at us. We're going to go find out, but let's go uh, have some conversations. We're going to start off with Joker. Um, and I said this in the past, I'm going to say it again. I will always go in the same circle of talking to people. So, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, we're gonna hit up Joker. Uh, now, Chakwas doesn't have anything else to say to us right now. So, uh, but, you know, of course, there's always that one moment in time. We're gonna hit up a bunch of things going on, but let's go ahead and talk to Liara, make sure she's okay, and all that good stuff. If you are here to talk about Benezia's death, you need not bother. 
She brought it upon herself. Okay. Um. Are you sure? <laughs> Don't pretend it doesn't bother you. She was your mother. She was. But she was not. I prefer to remember Benezia as she used to be. Before she was corrupted by Sovereign's power. She's still in your heart, Liara. The best of your mother lives on in you. Her determination, her intelligence, her strength. That is kind of you to say. I appreciate your concern, but I am fine. Benezia chose her path, just as I have chosen mine. Mm. I am with you until the end, Shepard. I don't, I don't know, I don't know about all that. <sighs> okay. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. I don't think she's, uh... I don't think she's actually come to terms with this. Maybe she has. Why am I glad to be off of Novaria? I don't know which was worse, the cold or the corporations. One will freeze your balls off, the other will sell them out from under you. With all due respect, <laughs> Commander. <laughs> it's totally fair. <laughs> I have to go. All right, see you. Okay. Good talk. Good talk. Freeze your balls off, the other will sell it out right from under you after they froze it off. Wow. Okay, let's see. Uh... Presley. Yes, Commander. Okay, let's see what we got here. How did you end up assigned to the Normandy? I signed up with the Alliance as a navigator right out of school, following in my grandfather's footsteps, I guess. My first posting was on the Agincourt. We were one of the first reinforcements to arrive at Elysium after the Blitz hit. <laughs> Those raiders were no match for an Alliance frigate. Of course, the only reason the colony was still standing was because of you, Commander. I can't believe you held out as long as you did. Yep, thanks. And so, now you're here, playing XO. How'd you end up on the Normandy? I got my officer's commission after Elysium. Must have made an impression on the right people. Captain asked for me when he was picking his crew. Love that he could handpick his crew, so. All right, thanks, Presley. Carry on, Presley. Yes, ma'am. He's a 
cranky little fuck. Let's go uh, talk to Caden. Do you have some time to talk now, Commander? I always have time to talk to my crew. Of course. Have a seat. We've played it pretty close to the book so far, but we're a long way from backup. We've got some tough calls to make. I'm just saying, try to leave yourself a way out. I've seen what cutting corners can do, and I'd hate to have that happen to you, Shepard. Commander. Aww. Are you concerned? I mean, I think I've done this twice. But, yeah. It's so sweet of you. That's not the appropriate way to address your commanding officer, Lieutenant. Sorry, ma'am. Maybe I got a bad signal. And if you're a... Maybe there's someone else you'd rather confide in. Ma'am. <laughs> Are you hitting on me, Alenko? <laughs> Someone? You're referring to our young Prothean expert. <laughs> I think she's older than both of us put together, but uh, yeah. There's a lower deck rumor that she's um, interested in you as more than a source of Prothean data. She's a very interesting lady, uh, to my uh, tastes, but uh, I never claimed to be big on alien culture. Oh, are you jealous? <laughs> you seem awfully worried about my personal affairs. It's just that we don't have much downtime these days. I like being around you, but I I don't want to take up your personal time. Oh my gosh. Don't don't be like that. Okay, you know? I'm standing right here. I'm, I'm Look, talking. you didn't want to talk about Liara, did you? What's your real issue? You're right. Sorry. It wasn't, uh... Liara's not my main concern. I'm not questioning any decision you've made, Shepard. Let me be clear about that. It's just my experience that once someone lets something slide, it tends to pick up speed. You get my meaning? So you... You've been through that before? Talk to me, Caden. You got a little black rain cloud sitting over your head. I'll try to keep the deck dry. You know the records about the biotic trading out on Jump Zero? They're all classified. Because the Alliance made mistakes. After first contact, Kinetics was set up to track Element Zero exposures and develop implants for humans. Once we had an embassy on the Citadel, Kinetics could bring in experts instead of taking it slow. Okay. Um, more about these experts. I, I, yeah, more words, context. The only experts would have to be aliens. Dead on. Turians, actually. That's why Kinetics kept it a secret. They were afraid of what people back home would think. Asking the Turians for help when we just fought a war with them. And not the Asari. The Asari would have been more acceptable than the Turians. Yes, but the company didn't go through the Citadel. It would have made Earth look weak, so they discreetly hired some Turian mercenaries. Mercenaries. Okay, and we couldn't do this by ourselves? Why? Urka. Erica. Is there some reason we couldn't learn it on our own? 
They didn't know where to start. Hell, it took a couple of years to even link Biotics and Ezo. Forget trying to get the kids to move stuff. They had trouble just helping them not break their own limbs. And their choice of teachers didn't help much. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, I I'm sure that was what they meant. I'm sure Kinetics did what they thought was best. It wasn't best for us. They brought in an ex-military Turian named Commander Vernus. To introduce himself, he liked to say, I was at the helm of the Dreadnought that killed your father. Well, I told him my dad wasn't in the war. He'd retired to Vancouver. My family had an inland home that matured to New Beachfront. Vernus had it in for me after that. He cut corners, pushed hard. I mean, you either came out a Superman or a wreck. A lot of kids snapped. A few died. The point of all this, I guess, is that when you cut corners, it's not always obvious who pays for it. And why are you telling me this now? So why are you telling me this? Is there something I can do to help you get over it? I'm 32, Shepard. You don't serve as long as I have without coming to terms with yourself. You also learn that if someone is special to you, you help them. Try to keep them from making mistakes. Special. Special. Mm-hmm. Special, huh? If I'm out of line, just say the word. Okay. Um, you're, you're not. You're not out of line, Caden. But there are regs. I get you, Shepard. I don't make a habit of complicating the chain of command. Just think about what I said. Perfect. Let's talk about this last mission. What's your opinion on the last mission? Killing Saren's, uh, what was Benezzi anyway? Second in command? Advisor? Anyway, it should set him back a bit. I'm sure Dr. Tassoni's hurting, though. Poor kid. Having to kill her own mom. And the Rachni Queen? Any opinion on the Rachni? Off the record? If we had the option, I'd as soon have left it to the Council. We weren't out here during the Ragnar War. I'm not sure we have any business getting involved. That's fair. Okay, thanks, Caden. We'll talk later, Caden. I'd like that. Okay, um, let's go find Garrus. Commander, good to see you. Garrus, good to see you too. <laughs> Let's talk about your personal stuff. I want to ask some questions. You've been with CSEC a while. Have you seen much action? Well, not as much as you, but yeah, I've seen some interesting things. And like what? I want to know. I bet you have. Anything in particular that stands out? I remember this Solarian geneticist I was sent to investigate. That case was a bit disturbing. Disturbing? Like, how? What happened? Why were you investigating him? I was tasked with tracking black market trade on the Citadel. Most of it harmless, nothing I needed to pursue. But during the course of my investigation, I noticed an increase in the trade of body parts. Organs, mostly. Whoa. We usually get a few of those, but not the numbers I was seeing. 
We weren't sure if there was a new black market lab or if some freak was harvesting organs from citizens. Uh, <laughs> yeah, is that common? Like, I, I, I have questions. You've seen this before on the Citadel? Every so often, some lab sells unwanted parts through the black market. Oh, God. They're not as bad as the psychos. I remember this one Elcor diplomat we caught in my first year on the job. He was hacking people up and selling their organs. Had the station in a bit of a panic. But this case wasn't that clear cut. Turns out there was more going on than we first realized. Okay. Such as. So, how did you figure out what was happening? First, we got a hold of a sample and ran DNA tests. The weird thing was match led us to a Turian who was still alive and was very convinced he'd never lost his liver. After a bit of digging, I discovered this Turian worked briefly for Dr. Salion, the geneticist. So I went to his lab hoping to find evidence of cloned organ development. But there was nothing. No Salarian hearts, no Turian livers, not one Krogan testicle. <laughs> Testicles. <laughs> You're kidding, right? Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? Some Krogan believe that testicle transplants can increase their virility, counteract the effects of the genophage. It doesn't work, but that doesn't stop them from buying. They'll pay up to 10,000 credits each. That's 40,000 for a full set. Whoa! Somebody's making a killing out there. Yeah! <laughs> oh my god. Okay, what about the doctor? What'd you do about the geneticist? I brought in some of his employees for interrogation to see if I could get them to talk. While I was interviewing one of them, I came across something suspicious. I, I, I feel quotation marks should have been around that like a human. You mean threatening? Was that really necessary? Maybe, maybe not. Either way, it paid off. One of my detainees started bleeding profusely during the interview. We offered to patch him up, and he got frantic, freaked out. I ordered a full exam to find out what was going on. Our medics found incisions all over his body, some of them fresh. That was our big break. Whoa. These people weren't just Dr. Salion's employees. They were test tubes, walking, living test tubes. That's disgusting. Ew. He was growing parts inside these people? Exactly. He cloned their organs right inside their own bodies. Then he harvested them and sold them off. Most of the victims were poor. He'd pay them each a small percentage of the sales, but only if the organs were good. Sometimes an organ wouldn't grow properly, so he'd just leave it in them. Most of them were a mess. But only on the inside, hidden, so nobody could see it. Holy shit. Wow, okay. Wow. Hmm. What did he say? I hope he got what he deserved. That's the worst part. We never caught him. Wait, what? Why? How? Questions! Why not? What the hell happened? He ran, blew his lab, grabbed some of his employees, and headed for the nearest space dock. By the time I found out, his ship was already leaving. He threatened to kill his hostages if we tried to stop him. And so they were just like, deuces, juices. Wow. But you went after him anyway, right? I ordered Citadel Defense to shoot him down, but CSEC headquarters countermanded my order. They were worried about the hostages, worried about civilian casualties, and the ship was destroyed so close to the Citadel. I told them those hostages were dead anyway. He just used them to make more organs. They wouldn't listen. That's pretty uncool, but I mean, I kind of agree with them. It's, you know, maybe they could- It's not worth the risk. You pursue the vessel and disable it. That's the best choice. They sent the military after him, but he got away just the same. Yes, they did. I went to Palin and told him what I thought of him and his policies. He said if I didn't like it, I could quit. Well, I almost did. 
All they had to do was disable that ship, stop him from running. Maybe the hostages die, maybe they don't, but at least we stopped the bastard responsible for it all. Hmm. I think there's more to it than that. If you don't care about the fate of those hostages, then you're no better than he is. You're just a terrorist with a badge. Yeah, maybe you're right. It doesn't make it any easier, but I see your point. Just wish I could have stopped him. That's all. Let's talk to more about this doctor. Doctor. Do you have any idea what happened to Dr. Salian? I sent out feelers from time to time, hoping to find something. I thought I'd found him a while back. He changed ships and changed his name to Dr. Hart. His idea of a joke, I guess. I told the military, but they weren't convinced it was him. I got the transponder frequency for his new ship, but I just can't get anyone to check it out. Ooh, hand it over. <laughs> give, give, give it, give it. I, I can find somebody. I can find somebody to hack I'll it. I'll check out the coordinates when I get a chance. I was hoping you'd say that. But Commander, take me with you when you go. If it's Saleon be there when you find him. You know, honestly, Garrus is, you know, since Garrus is the mirror image of Shepard, anything that Shepard does is going to be reflected off of Garrus. And so it does change, all the, you know, how you treat him does change how he becomes. All right. Commander? Ashley. How are we doing? Do you have a few minutes to talk? One on one? Sure. I was just watching some mail from home. Oh, before I go, we saw Caden in a news vid about the Normandy. He's cute. Later, sis. <laughs> Let's pretend this never happened. Mmm, Caden, huh? Yeah. You know what? You can take him off my hands. Are you interested in the lieutenant chief? No, ma'am. And anyway, Scuttlebutt says he's already sweet on someone. What's up? You didn't come by to eavesdrop on family mail. You know what? Tell me about them anyway. Your family seems to be important to you. Yeah, we've always been close. Me and my sisters especially. With dad on duty so much, I had to help mom raise them. Yeah, I'm familiar with that. So let's talk about dad. Did your father serve with the fleet? Yeah. Took any crap posting he could get that offered space time. You know what? He worked his ass off trying to get recognized. But he never made it above serviceman third class. He was real proud when I made chief. First thing he did was salute. Nice. That's actually honorable. Alright, let's talk about mom. What about your mother? You haven't mentioned her. You must know what military wives are like. Strong because they have to be, able to raise kids while dad's away on a six-month cruise. She has a degree in planetary geology. She and dad both wanted to see new worlds. She gave up her career to raise us, though. Nothing wrong with that. It really isn't, actually. All right, let's talk about your sisters. You have more than one sister? Sounds like a big family. Yeah, I'm the oldest, then Abby, then Lynn. Sarah's the youngest. She's still in high school. With four girls, Dad used to say he felt more outnumbered at home than on maneuvers. That mean, that's fair. Let's talk about your home. Where did you grow up? All over. Same as you expect. We transferred a half a dozen times before I finished grade school. You go where personnel command sends you, right? Pretty much. I guess that's why I'm so tight with my sisters. We'd have to leave all our friends every two or three years. You know, I grew up military myself, so as a military brat, I, I, that definitely sounds familiar. I was an only child, but I get the idea. At least one of my parents was always on duty. Yeah, military families, eh? With schedules like that, it's a wonder we ever have kids anymore. Things were tense between Sarah and me for a while. Then we bonded. How's that? Sounds like a story. Feel like sharing? Sarah got herself a boyfriend who wanted to go faster than she did. Mike. I didn't think he was a bad kid, just pushy. Lynn would send me these worried vid mails, and I'd tell her to relax. 
Bit males, okay. Where were you when this was going on? I was on active duty. Sarah's graduating high school this year. This was only a couple of years back. They were on Amaterasu. At the time, I was assigned to Chernobyl. Same cluster, but a dozen hell why away. Close enough to talk regularly, too far to make it back in an emergency. I couldn't afford a fast packet flight. That, I mean, that's fair. But no does me no. If he really liked her, he wouldn't be pushy. Yeah, of course. If he didn't ask at all, I'd wonder if he thought Sarah was ugly. <laughs> damned if you do, damned if you don't. Mike thought they'd go for a romantic walk in the woods, because he figured it was past time they did the deed. She levered Mike face first into a tree and left. Nice. Didn't have a scratch on her. Good thing mom and dad had us all learn some kind of self-defense. I took emergency leave and walked Sarah to school for a few days. Good. Let's talk about that self-defense class. You said all of your sisters learned self-defense? Lynn did pistol practice, but didn't like it. She's kind of nervous. Sarah took Aikido. Abby decided to learn the sword. She always was a little weird. Likes big skirts and tops you have to tie her into. They do great things to her figure, though. <laughs> and you? So, what did you learn? One of Dad's friends taught me Marine hand-to-hand. -hand. Yeah. What about the police? And all this. Why didn't you tell the police? She said it wouldn't solve the real problem, and she and Mike would both become household names. It was a small colony. I said it was her call to make, that we should let her do it her way. Mom was pretty pissed about that. Well, that was very good of you as a big sister. You traveled all the way home to walk your sister to school. It was only a dozen light years, like a day's cruise. It's not like it was going to Earth or something. My last day out, Mike was waiting for us. Sarah had told her friends, so everyone at school knew what he did. He wasn't happy. I wanted to snap him in half, but Sarah gave me this look, this let me handle it, I need to do this alone look. She kept her cool, God bless her, as he screamed in her face. She just let him vent. Then he tried to punch her. I swear, she just flowed around him. Next thing I knew, he's face down on the sidewalk and there's blood everywhere. Nice. <laughs> That's unbelievable. Sarah must be as good as you. Better. I'm more or less a straight up puncher. When he swung, she just, she wasn't there anymore and he fell. She helped him stop the bleeding and had me call an ambulance. She told the paramedics he fell. Before they took him to the hospital, Mike touched Sarah's arm. I thought he was gonna end up on the ground again. But he hung his head, whispered, I'm sorry, and started crying. And she hugged him. The Williams women are a decisive bunch, Commander. We do things when we're ready. Not before, not after. Good story. Thank you. Your sister's something else. But you didn't mention your father at all. Was he on deployment? Dad always wanted to serve in space. But he wanted us to have real ground under our feet. He'd say, space is beautiful, but you can't raise a family there. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I've enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly, both with those that love me and alone. For always roaming with a hungry heart, much have I seen and known. Cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments. Poetry, huh? Nice. I never thought I'd hear you reciting poetry. Just because I can drill you between the eyes at 100 meters doesn't mean I can't like sensitive stuff. Just don't <laughs> spread it around. Ulysses was my dad's favorite poem. Every time he shipped out, he recorded me reading it. He had a dozen versions when he retired. It's a really good piece, actually. Does he still like it? I sure hope so. I read it to his grave every time I go home. Dad passed on a few years back. 
He's probably still watching, though. So, you believe in heaven? You mean from wherever we go after death? Dead on, Skipper. He's with God now. Gotcha. That's not a problem with you, is it? That I believe in God? No. It's on you. You do you. On that. Everyone has the right to believe what they want. Says so in the Alliance Charter. Only with fancier words. I'm glad you're open-minded about it. I've met a few people who are really weirded out by my faith. Because I work in space, I can't believe in a higher power. Jeez. Hello, have you people looked out the window? How can you look at this galaxy and not believe in something? I should get back to my duties. Didn't mean to take up so much of your time. Well, tell me how we're doing. What's your opinion of the last mission? You mean the Rachni, right? They were dangerous, Skipper. They proved that 2,000 years ago. I think it was a mistake to let them go. But that wasn't my call to make. It was yours. You know, you really should talk to Tassoni about her mom. She has to be hurting. Just saying, Skipper. Okay. Thanks. I'll take that under advisement. Dismissed, Chief. Ma'am. All right. Uh, let's go chat with Rex. Because Rex wasn't there. Probably for the best. Because Rack Knight Wars. Yeah. What do you want, Shepard? Rex. Can we talk? Why did you become a mercenary? Lots of reasons. <laughs> is there more than that, or is that the end of the book? <laughs> Such as? Such as, I needed to get out of our system. I needed to eat. I needed to survive. And you left why? Why not stay and help your people? I tried to help. That's why I had to leave. Really? Really? Hmm. What happened? I was betrayed. I was head of a small tribe. We were trying to restore order after the war. But the other tribes were against us. They followed Jared. One of the few warlords who survived the war with the Turians. But he was old, and so were his ideas. He wanted to continue the war. He wanted us to fight. Turians, Salarians, each other. It didn't matter who, as long as we were fighting. And what about you? How did you feel about that? What did you want? I just wanted Jared to shut up, <laughs> to stop his ranting. I wanted him to stop leading the tribes astray. But he couldn't understand how much things had changed. We didn't have the numbers to go to war. Even if we did, the Genophage made sure we couldn't replenish our numbers fast enough. I told them all to forget about war. We needed to focus on breeding. At least for one generation. And for a while, we were getting through. Some of the tribes started coming around. And I'm guessing that this Jared was not happy that you stepped on his toes. I take it the warlord didn't appreciate that. No, he didn't. He arranged a crush with the tribes. A meeting on neutral ground. He wanted to talk. We met at the Hollows, near the graves of our ancestors. The skulls of our dead lay bare to remind us where we come from, and where we all go. It's as sacred as any Krogan place can be. Violence is forbidden. So you went there?
Sounds like a trap to me. You must have suspected as much. I did. But when your father invites you to a crush, well, there are some laws that even we hold sacred. Your father? Jared was your father? He was. Until that day. We talked, but we didn't get anywhere. When it was clear that I wouldn't join him, he gave the signal. His men leapt from the graves of our ancestors like Krogan undead. The few that were loyal to me died quickly. I escaped with my life, but not before I sank my dagger deep into my father's chest. That is why I left. And that's why I'll never go back. Okay. Um, I, I think we need to talk a little bit more about your family. You must family. have family other than your father. Don't you miss them? You're trying to make me cry, Shepard. I've got some unfinished business with my family. But that's all. Again, more words. What kind of business? Before I left, I made an oath to my father's father. I swore to recover my family's battle armor. It was taken from him after the uprising. So, tell me some more about this armor. What's so important about this armor? It's a relic. Useless, really. But it was worn by five generations of my family before the war. It's rightfully mine. Originally, it was taken by the Turian military. We weren't allowed armor or weapons after the war. Now, it's in the hands of Ton Actus, a Turian scum who collects relics from the war. He's made millions selling Krogan artifacts that were stolen from my people. He's got several bases where he stores his goods. All fortified and guarded. I just don't know which base has my family's armor. Find guy, break nose, get stuff. Got it. I'll do that. Just tell me where to start looking. I'll upload the data to your nav system, but Commander, I want to be there when you find him. Well, of course, dear. Of course, Shepard. So long, Rex. Shepard. Okay. Go down here to uh, engineering. Something I can do for you, Commander. Um, yeah, let's ask Adam some, about some personal questions. Where else have you served, Adams? You name a class of Alliance ship, I've probably served on it. Everything from dreadnoughts and carriers right down to frigates like the Normandy. My last assignment was on the Tokyo. Only a cruiser, but she was a good ship. Couldn't hold a candle to the Normandy, though. <laughs> That's so nice of you. Thanks a lot, Adams. Short and sweet. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. All right, let's go talk to Dim Hips. Also known as Tally. Shepard, I'm glad you're here. Wow, uh, glad you're feeling better. Yeah. Good to see you smiling again, uh, so to speak. I'm sleeping much better now. I guess I'm getting used to how quiet your ship is. I still think a lot about my pilgrimage, though. 
I know Steren's our top priority, but with all the worlds we go to, I was hoping to find something to bring back to the flotilla. You will. We'll, we'll find you some sort of something. It'll happen. We've still got a long way to go. You'll find something to take back. Yes, but it cannot just be some derelict ship my people can use for salvage. It has to be more than that. There's a lot expected of me. Okay. Why? What's so special about you? It's my father. He's the senior member of the Admiralty Board. He's one of only five people who can overrule the decisions of the Conclave for the good of the migrant fleet. My father is responsible for the lives of 17 million people. Our entire race is in his hands, and I'm his only child. Okay, so you're a princess? That's what you're saying, you princess. So are you some kind of heir to the Quarian throne or something? No, it doesn't work that way. My oh. father's position isn't hereditary. I'll probably never serve on the Admiralty Board myself. Officially, I'm just the same as any other citizen. But it doesn't work that way in practice. People have always treated me differently because of who my father is. So you're a princess. Yeah. Princess Tally. Okay. You must get all kinds of special privileges. I probably had it easier than most growing up. But it's not all good. People like my father have enemies, and they're not above using me to get to him. So you are a princess. Because kidnap the princess to get to the king. Got it. The trope. It must be tough on you. My people place a high value on family and ancestry. There's an unspoken expectation that I'll live up to my father's example. Everyone's waiting for me to do something great on my pilgrimage. Something that will forever change our lives for the better. If I don't, it's like I failed. And that reflects badly on both me and my father. Well, what if, you know, just saying, we saved the galaxy. Would that do it for you, Princess Tally? The work you're doing here is more important than anything any Quarian's ever done before. Yes, I know. But you have to understand Quarian culture. We're a very insular society. The events beyond the flotilla don't much matter to the average citizen. Our greatest dream is that one day, we'll return to our homeworld and drive out the Geth. But even if we stop Saren, that's not going to happen. There's still millions of Geth behind the Veil. Until they're gone, our exile will continue. So... Um... What's the answer, then? What would you need to bring back to make everyone happy? Something that would help us better understand the Geth. They've changed significantly since the Exile. They've continued to evolve. We've done our best to study them, but it's not easy. They're very reclusive. Until recently, they never went beyond the borders of the Vale. And all the Geth we run into now are under Saren's control. We'd need to find Geth operating on their own, independently. But I don't want this to get in the way of our mission, Shepard. First, we stop Saren. Then I'll worry about my own problems. Well, um, just... Okay. More to come on that. I should go. See you later. Alright, uh... I don't have to talk to Chakwa, so that does save some time. Alright, uh, is Acquisition standing over here? Yes, he is. Okay, perfect.
Looking for supplies? All right, show me what you got. Let's see what you got. You bet, Commander. Excellent. Try to talk to Liara again. See if I can get anything out of her. Especially seeing as uh, there's rumors going around that Liara is more than interested. I get the feeling you want to ask me something, Commander. Yes. <laughs> Tell me more about yourself. Maybe we could pick up where we left off. You were telling me about your interest in the Protheans. Actually, I think I was talking about my interest in you, and making a fool of myself in the process. As I said, I am not used to dealing with people, especially humans. I did not really know much about your species when we first met, Shepard. I found it hard to take humanity seriously. Your kind always seemed so rushed and high-strung. We're a lot more short-lived, but, you know, it's okay. What about now? How do you feel about that, us now? Has your opinion changed at all? It has. I have been watching you and your crew. It has taught me a lot about your species. You humans are creatures of action. You pursue your goals with an almost indomitable determination. It is an admirable trait, but also an intimidating one. Okay. Uh, how is it intimidating? Please, tell me more. You're scared of us? Unfortunately, the rest of the galaxy sees humanity as something of a bully. You run over anyone in your path to get what you want. Fuck yeah. It is up to people like you to change their minds, Shepard. I mean, I'm trying, but fuck yeah. Drive Mako right over somebody's stupid ass head. I'm doing the best I can, Liara. There is a reason the Council chose you to become a Spectre. They saw something special in you. The best of what humanity has to offer. I looked into your history. I know what you did during the Blitz. It was a remarkable display of courage and heroism. Yeah, but you could have you could have asked me instead. Uh, but okay, so you looked it up. Good researching. Why are you so interested in me? I wanted to know more about you, to understand what made you into the woman you are. There is something compelling about you, Shepard. I want to believe that a lot. Are you sure you're interested in me? Or is it my visions of the Protheans? I admit, your connection to the Protheans had something to do with my initial interest. But it has grown beyond that. You intrigue me, Shepard. But I was not sure if it was appropriate to act on my feelings. I thought there might already be a relationship between you and Lieutenant Elenko. Um... <laughs> no. No. You want a relationship with me? Even though we're both women? We Asari are monogendered, Commander. Male and female do not have any real meaning for us. We do, however, have maternal instincts. 
So perhaps we would fill what you consider a female role. I'm sorry if this is awkward for you, Shepard. I am only trying to be honest. I feel as if we share some type of connection. But none of this matters if you are already involved in a serious relationship with Lieutenant Elenko. I... no. No, not. He's special, but he's not that special. No. The Lieutenant and I are just friends. Nothing more. My mistake, then. I am not as adept at understanding human relationships as I thought. But what about us, Shepard? Is there a mutual attraction, or was I wrong about that, too? Nope, not wrong. Not wrong at all. I, yes. Yes. Blueberry. Yes. No, you were right. There is something between us. I knew it, and I knew you felt it, too. But does this not seem rather strange? Why do I feel so close to you? We have only known each other a short time. We are from two different species. We have almost nothing in common. Soulmates. This makes no sense. It's a soulmate thing. It doesn't have to make sense. Just get over here and kiss me, you beautiful blueberry. These things never make sense. They just happen and we get swept up in the storm. You make it sound so chaotic, so dangerous. I got you. So, it's, it's okay. I got you. Don't tell me a little danger puts you off. This is all a bit overwhelming. I am not used to this. You. I need some time. Okay. I understand. You know where to find me. Take all the time you need, Liara. I'll be here. Thank you, Shepard. Let's... let's just talk about something else for now. Okay. I, I got nothing. Um... Good talk. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. Okay. Yay! The blueberry likes us. That's that's awesome. I'm good with that. It fucked that one up. Alright, what am I looking at? Oh, we're at an hour already. Awesome. that is gonna do it for me uh, for those of you who do celebrate I do hope that you have a uh, an amazing 4th of July this week um, if you don't that's okay have a great weekend have a great week we're gonna do this All right, perfect. So, um, let's see. He Presley has chicken pox. Awesome. Uh, so yeah, this week is the Fourth of July. If you do celebrate, please be careful. Uh, get yourself a designated driver, or just don't drive. Don't be stupid. Throw your keys in the safe or under your bed or something. Just be careful out there, guys. And uh, we're going to read through our emails here and stuff. And I will see all of you next week. Stick around through the end to just make sure you catch it all.
sleep next to me I still feel your touch in my dreams Forgive me my weakness But I don't know why Noveria is a cool, rocky world with most of its hydrosphere locked up in massive glaciers. A privately chartered colony world, the planet is owned by the Noveria Development Corporation Holding Company. The NDC is funded by investment capital from two dozen high technology development firms and administrated by an executive board representing their interests. The investors built remote hot labs in isolated locations across Noveria's surface. These facilities are used for research too dangerous or controversial to be performed elsewhere, as Noveria is technically not part of Citadel space and therefore exempt from council law. By special arrangement, Citadel special tactics and reconnaissance agents have been granted extraterritorial privileges, but it remains to be seen how committed the executive board is to that principle. Given its unique situation, it is understandable that Noveria is often implicated in all manner of wild conspiracy theories. Larger warships are generally classified in one of four weights. Frigates are small, fast ships used for scouting and screening of larger vessels. Frigates often operate in wolf pack flotillas. Cruisers are middleweight combatants, faster than dreadnoughts and more heavily armed than frigates. Cruisers are the standard patrol unit and often lead frigate flotillas. Dreadnoughts are kilometer-long capital ships mounting heavy, long-range firepower. They are only deployed for the most vital missions. Carriers are dreadnought-sized vessels that also carry large numbers of fighters. Smaller vessels are almost exclusively used in a support role to the warships during combat. Fighters are one-man craft used to perform close-range attacks on enemy ships. Interceptors are one-man craft optimized for destroying opposing fighters. Sovereign is the flagship of the rogue Spectre's Saren. An enormous dreadnought larger than any other ship in any known fleet, it is crewed with both Geth and Krogan. At two kilometers long, its spinal-mounted main gun is likely capable of penetrating another dreadnought's kinetic barriers with a single shot. How Saren acquired this incredible warship is unknown. The prevailing opinion is that Sovereign is a Geth construct, while others believe it is a Prothean relic. Its design, however, hints at a more alien and mysterious origin. The attack on Eden Prime demonstrated Sovereign's ability to generate mass effect fields powerful enough to land on a planetary surface. This implies it has a massive element zero core and the ability to generate staggering amounts of power. <laughs> 